Hey everybody, it's the Crypto Anarchist here, and I'm bringing you a short video today on atomic swaps and their implications. So, one thing that I see a lot when people are talking about atomic swaps is they don't really understand the implications that atomic swaps are going to have. And what I mean by this is that when you hear uh, people talk about atomic swaps, the two coins that usually get brought up are Vertcoin and Litecoin because they've done on-chain atomic swaps, and the developers are really putting quite a bit of work into getting you know atomic swaps working on their chain. However, the one thing that I really want every to understand is that like with an atomic swap yes you can the way it basically works is you can do a blockchain to blockchain transfer but it doesn't really have any uh, implications for coins except privacy coins and we'll go ahead and uh, talk about this but the reason why it only really has implications for privacy coins is you gain the properties of both chains uh, that are used in an atomic swap but certain um, certain properties do not swap so like if you do an atomic swap from bitcoin to vertcoin vertcoin's asic resistant but you can't like doing an atomic swap into vertcoin doesn't make bitcoin asic resistant however if you do swaps with privacy coins you can um, you can get or you can use bitcoin and gain the privacy attributes of the privacy centric coin uh, even though like you, you'll swap from bitcoin to a privacy coin back into bitcoin um, and so we'll go ahead and talk about these individually here so what is an atomic swap it's just a direct blockchain to blockchain transfer so it means like you can you can tr transfer bitcoin into an altcoin without an exchange um, so it's it allows for completely decentralized transfers a lot of people think like oh after atomic swaps you know exchanges are going to go away i highly doubt it because uh the one thing about atomic swaps is you like you you would have to do it manually, and the one thing that the crypto space never like is not getting done at all is uh, applications. So I would assume when atomic swaps come out, uh, actually using them is not going to be the easiest thing. Just that's the way the crypto space is. It's unfortunate, but you can look at something else like uh, multi-signature transactions. Multi-signature transactions have been out forever, uh, and nobody really uses them or knows how to use them, uh, even though they have a lot of uses. Um, especially like the, the main place that multi-signature transactions have a lot of uses right now are uh, on dark net markets where uh, it's very common for like these uh, dark, uh, I guess black markets, these online black markets for them to go down and all the coins to get lost. Um, so if you use multi-signature transactions, you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, but basic, I think it's like 95 to 98 percent of these black market online or these online black market transactions are not done with uh, multi-signature transactions. So even in cases where, like, you know, they really should be using these uh, types of applications that uh, cryptos offer, the applications are not that easy to use, so people just don't learn them. So I would assume that will probably be the case with atomic swaps when they first come out. They're not going to be easy to use, so people just won't use them, and they'll still use exchange. The other thing too is it's not like there's no fees. The fees equal um, the network fees of both blockchains. So one reason why atomic swaps aren't really good for Bitcoin right now is the uh, average transaction fee. I like I know for a while there the average transaction fee was around five bucks. Um, I hope it's closer to like two bucks now. Um, I guess I could check it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> it's way high though. So like you know doing an atomic transaction with Bitcoin or t atomic swap with Bitcoin, it's not really a great idea right now because the fees are so high. But moving on, um, if you're doing atomic swaps, you can pay like if you, you, you can pay somebody in Bitcoin if all you hold is alts. Um, so there's a lot of really big implications for this for all cryptocurrencies, just because like you can hold whatever cryptocurrency you want and then you can pay somebody and they can receive whatever cryptocurrency they want. So atomic swaps, like there's there's a lot of big uses for this and it offers true or true choices in currency because like if you go anywhere in the world you have to use the currency that you know that country's currency imagine if you had you know atomic swaps with cryptocurrencies you can pay somebody with whatever you want and then just swap it for whatever currency they want and another thing too is like I've talked about this a lot of different times you can make blockchain versions of whatever currency you want so you could actually do this same thing for like the euro or the dollar so you could actually pay somebody with Bitcoin and they could receive a blockchain version of the dollar or the euro again will this happen I don't know the application side of cryptos kind of sucks right now and nobody's trying to develop it so you just gotta wait on developers to pick this sort of thing up um, I'm not a developer so I can't make it for you guys unfortunately uh, but you know there's a, there's huge implications for atomic swaps and just for blockchain technologies in general but again these atomic swaps 
there are huge implications for crypto in general. A lot of people will try and say, oh, if atomic swaps come out, Vertcoin and Litecoin are going to the moon. No, like whatever crypto is going to the moon is going to go to the moon and it'll just go to the moon even more because of atomic swaps. There's only a couple of cryptos that uh, you will actually see go to the moon because of atomic swaps, like in comparison to all other cryptos in existence. And those are the Anon coins, the anonymous coins. Now, how do you how do I know that Anon coins will have a lot of uses for atomic swaps? Well, swaps swaps mix the coin attributes of both coins, I guess I should say of both chains there, that looks kind of stupid. Swaps mix coin, attri coin attributes of both coins. Looks stupid, it should be swaps mix the uh, coin attributes of both chains, or chain attributes of both coins. Either way would work. But basically, uh, like if you're doing Bitcoin transactions, everybody knows it's pseudonymous, right? So if you did a swap with Bitcoin and something like PIVX, which uses zero knowledge, um, by minting ZPIV or the uh, you know the zero coin version of PIVX, uh, you would then like after doing an atomic swap, you would then delete all the transaction history of your coins, and so then you would completely clear any sort of transaction analysis that anybody is doing on your bitcoins and then you would just do another atomic swap and you would pay for this atomic swap uh, with your zero coin pivx coins and you would get new bitcoin in a new address and then you know there's no there's absolutely no transaction data uh, on these new bitcoins and so that's how like this is a massive thing for privacy coins because it allows any cryptocurrency to gain privacy attributes even if they don't have these privacy um, algorithms within them so what that means is that people will have to like it will create a huge um, you know sort of uh, demand I guess for all these uh, for all these privacy coins because people will want like if they want to privatize their usage of any type of cryptocurrency all they'll have to do is an atomic swap with the privacy coin now there's certain coins that I know for a fact this will work with. Um, that's the zero knowledge coins because the zero knowledge coins, all you have to do is you know do a swap while having your coins uh, go through the zero knowledge. Um, I guess you'd say algorithm or program that the coin uses. So things like Zcoin, um, Pivx, uh, Zencash, and Zcash should still work. Uh, the one thing about Zencash and Zcash is uh, they're not a, like they're a little bit different than Bitcoin, so it'll probably take them longer to build a good application for it and the reason why I say they're a little different like if you look if you've ever used a Zencash or Zcash wallet it's not the same type of wallet as um, Bitcoin has while Zcoin and Pivx use the same type of wallet as Bitcoin another one uh, that doesn't have the same type of wallet as Monero so it might be a little harder for these ones to be able to do swaps but you know if you can swap with any privacy coin and then you just swap back into uh, the coin the original coin you used you've cleared the transaction uh, analysis that uh, could be done on your Bitcoin. So this is a massive thing for privacy coins. It's absolutely massive. Um, it, and again, the ones that uh, the ones that the w the way you do this, just for a walkthrough. Let's say you have Bitcoin, and for whatever reason, maybe like because this is going to be huge for hospitals. Uh, if you don't know this, like you should know this, but everything you do within the health industry, it's supposed to be private, except for the people who are involved. Um, so you can't really use Bitcoin payments for anything involved in the health industry because they're pseudonymous and they're not private. So you, they can't actually follow through on all the privacy regulations that are in place uh, by the government on them. And now I'm not a big fan of government regulation, but having your health information private, that's a great thing. You don't want people to know all your health issues because uh, then they can really screw up your life if they're you know evil people, malevolent people. But so when people... You know, a lot of people will think, oh, this is only for criminals. No, it's for things like the health industry. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different other industries where privacy is absolutely paramount. But let's say, you know, we'll make a really sort of disgusting example just so that you, like, you realize that you would want to keep this private. Let's say, you know, you turn 60 or something and you ha start having rectal issues, okay? You heard that right, rectal issues. Maybe it's rectal cancer, who knows? You don't want somebody to know about this. So you don't want like people to be able to look at your Bitcoin transactions and be like, oh, he just paid a bunch of money for getting his rectal cancer treated. That's gross. Um, so if you had Bitcoin and you're like, okay, I want to pay for this treatment but I don't want you know I want the pri I want to do it privately, what we what you would do is you would do an atomic swap uh, with Bitcoin for a zero knowledge coin and then those coins are clean so now you could either pay with that zero knowledge coin 
Um, or if you wanted to go back into Bitcoin, like let's say your hospital doesn't accept zero knowledge coins, then you do another swap from your zero, zero knowledge coin back into or back into Bitcoin. And all you have to do is send this Bitcoin to a fresh address that has never been used before. And then those Bitcoins have no transaction history to them. And there's no way to trace those Bitcoins uh, back to yourself from the original transaction because you used it through a zero knowledge coin. Now, the one thing you have to remember is you can't just send it straight from, you know, Bitcoin to a zero knowledge coin without using the zero knowledge algorithm. So for something like PIVX or Zcoin, you would have to mint the zero coin and then spend that zero coin to uh, pay for the Bitcoin on your second swap. But that's that's all you'd have to do. So as, as soon as you swap back uh, after using the zero knowledge algorithm that the coin offers, uh, you swap to a new Bitcoin address and voila, your coins are clean, there's no transaction analysis to them, there's no way anyone can link you to them. Um, and so this makes Bitcoin resistant to transaction analysis. Technically speaking, this makes any coin resistant to transaction analysis, and it's all through atomic swaps. Uh, but again, this final point, like everyone keeps talking about Vertcoin and Litecoin for atomic swaps, but Vertcoin and Litecoin don't have attributes that can swap. It's basically only privacy that can swap. And uh, so like, Vertcoin and Litecoin were originally created to be ASIC resistant. Litecoin's not ASIC resistant anymore, but ASIC resistance does not swap. Okay, you cannot you cannot send or do an atomic swap with Vertcoin and then swap back to Bitcoin and be like, haha, now my Bitcoin are ASIC resistant. It's like that doesn't even make any sense. Next point, faster transaction times don't swap. So Vertcoin and Litecoin have faster transaction times than Bitcoin, but an atomic swap requires both transact or like it uses both blockchains so that's meaningless for atomic swaps and then different block rewards like Bitcoin, Vertcoin and Litecoin all have different block rewards but that doesn't swap either. The only main attribute right now that swaps is uh, privacy. Um, so atomic swaps are a massive like it's going to be create massive demand uh, so long as atomic swaps get used but the only thing it will actually create massive demand for is privacy coins because then these privacy coins can be used by any other coin in order to swap their privacy attributes over to these coins that aren't private now the thing that you have to remember with this too is like uh, you know people are gonna be like oh this is gonna be real like it's gonna be only for criminals well even a cr like if a criminal were trying to use this uh, again when you do an atomic swap you mix the uh, um, attributes of both blockchains. So if you're doing an atomic swap with someone you know is a criminal trying to clear the, the um, clear the transaction analysis of their bitcoins, uh, because they're sending their Bitcoin the bitcoins to you, like that will be known. So this this makes the uh, pseudonymous coins more private, but when you're doing an atomic swap, it actually makes your privacy coin less private. Now, again, if you're doing some sort of swap like this, you know, there's some fees involved, and I would assume, like, if you're trying to get the privacy features of a privacy coin, you could actually make money by doing swaps. Uh, if, you, if you're the holder of a privacy coin, like, you charge a small fee to yourself on top of it, um, and so it, it could just be a way to make money by owning privacy coins. I don't really know exactly how it'll turn out, but the thing you have to remember is that uh, it swaps both attributes of both chains. So while you're making the pseudonymous coins more private, you're making the private coins more pseudonymous. So that's the thing you got to remember at this. Um, and I hope I really cleared something up here because, again, I think when people talk about atomic swaps, they don't really know what they're talking about. But as far as privacy coins are or are as far as privacy coins are concerned, uh, this is a great thing. And it's basically like, it's great for all cryptocurrencies, but it's especially great for privacy coins. And it's another reason that I really like privacy coins.